What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, we have to find the quadratic functions that have the following characteristics. So there's basically four different questions. So starting off with number one, quadratic function that has x-intercepts of negative three and four, and passes through the point three and nine. Now, with these types of questions, when they give you the x-intercepts, you usually want to put it in factored form. So as a review, this is factored form here, where r and s are the x-intercepts. So you could plug in the x-intercepts for r and s, and then you could solve for the a value by plugging in the point it passes through. So we would have y equals a, and then uh, x minus negative 3 would turn into x plus 3. And then this 4 here, we'd have x minus 4 right? X-intercepts of negative 3 and positive 4. And then we have this a value we have to solve for. So we could plug in 3 and 9. So we'd plug in 9 for y, and we'd plug in 3 for x. So we would end up having 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. This would be 9. Multiply all these. a times 6 times negative 1 is negative 6a. And then, uh, so a would be uh, negative 9 over 6, right? Divide both sides by negative 6. And then this simplifies to negative, uh, what, 3 over 2? So taking this a value, plugging it in here, we would have y equals negative 3 over 2, x plus 3, x minus 4. Moving on to number 2, we have a quadratic function that has one x-intercept of 5 and a y-intercept of negative 10. So this one's a little bit more unique because there's only one x-intercept. So let's actually draw this. Let's show it visually. So one x-intercept of 5, which is here, so this point is 5 and 0, and then a y-intercept of negative 10, which is down here. And this point is 0 and negative 10. So if there's one x-intercept for a quadratic, then if you remember, that's always going to be the vertex of the quadratic. So it's going to look something like that. So if you want to put this in vertex form, it would be what? x minus 5 squared plus 0, like that. But the zero, you don't have to put. So you could just put a bracket x minus 5 squared. And uh, this is actually in factored form as well, because there's like an x minus 5 times x minus 5. So whenever there's one x-intercept for a quadratic, it's always going to be the vertex. <clears throat> and there's always going to be one factor to the power of 2 versus two factors like we had in scenario 1, where you had two x-intercepts. So from here, you can solve for the a value by plugging in this coordinate. So we would plug in negative 10 for y, and we would plug in 0 for x. So 0 minus 5 is negative 5, squared is 25, so we'd have 25a, negative 10 here. So a would be negative 10 over 25, and that simplifies to what? Negative 2 over 5? So plug in that here that is the final answer. That's the quadratic function for number two. And then number three, we have a quadratic function that has x-intercepts of plus or minus root five and passes through negative three and eight. So notice here, we're given two x-intercept plus or minus root five. So even though we're dealing with radicals, it's the exact same steps as before. So we're gonna plug in uh, plus and minus root 5 for the r and the s, the intercepts. So we'd have y equals a x minus root 5 x plus root 5, like that. And what you want to do here is you actually want to expand this because you want to get rid of the radicals. So before we solve for the a value, um, like we did before, 
we're going to expand these two brackets, try to get rid of this radical. And notice that this is just a difference of squares here. So when you expand it, you'd have x times x, which is x squared, x times positive root 5, which would be positive root 5x. This would be negative root 5x. And then negative root 5 times positive root 5. Root 5 times root 5 is just 5. And then this negative positive, that turns into a negative. So we just have minus 5 there. All right, so notice how these are like terms and they cancel out. So because this was a difference of squares, technically we just have to multiply the first terms and the last terms together. So x times x is x squared. And then uh, negative root 5 times positive root 5 is just negative 5. So notice how we took this, expanded it, and now we don't have any radicals that we're dealing with. So it looks a lot nicer. And now you could plug in negative 3 and a. Uh, negative 3 and 8 um, to solve for the a value. So 8 would be y. And then we plug in negative 3 for x here. That would be in brackets. Um, so negative 3 squared is 9 minus 5 gives us 4. Then we have this 8 here. So a is um, divide both sides by 4, so it would be 2. Right? So the 2 we plug in here into the simplified quadratic function without the radicals. So this here would be your final answer. And if you want to expand it, this one's pretty easy to expand. You just distribute the 2 in, you'd have 2x squared minus 10. But usually this answer is fine, factored like that. All right. So when you give your final answer with these types of questions where you have radicals and the intercepts, you always want to make sure that your final answer is without radicals, right? That's the proper format. So you don't want to plug in that two here. You want to plug it in right there. And then finally, question four, I erase the other questions because this one I feel like is going to need a lot more room. So we got x intercepts of three plus or minus root two and the quadratic is going to pass through negative four, negative five. Okay, so let's rewrite these intercepts separately. So one x-intercept is 3 plus root 2. So that whole thing right there, that whole expression is an x-intercept. Then the other x-intercept is 3 minus root 2. So those are the two x-intercepts that we're dealing with and then it passes through this point. So same thing, we want to put it into factored form because we're given the intercepts. But when we plug in the intercepts, we're gonna be plugging in that whole expression for R and then this whole expression for S. So you wanna make sure that these are in brackets because you're gonna to have to distribute that negative inside the bracket. So here's what I mean by this. So we got Y equals A, and then you would write X minus three plus root two Right, so x minus this x-intercept, and then x minus this x-intercept, three minus root two. So what you wanna do at this point is you wanna to try to get rid of these radicals like we did in scenario three. You wanna make this look nicer. So the next step is you wanna distribute this negative inside the bracket, and then this negative inside the bracket. So here we'd have x minus three, minus root two. And then here we'd have x minus three, negative, negative, plus root two. And from here, there's actually two methods to do this. There's one long method and one short method. I'm gonna go over both. So this is gonna be method one. So basically both methods are gonna be from this step. So when I show you method two, I'm gonna erase everything and I'm gonna come back to this line, show you how I usually do it. This is the longer method. The longer method is taking these two brackets and fully foiling them out. The reason why it's gonna be a long method is because we have three uh, terms times three terms. So we gotta foil out this, 
this, and that, and then this, this, this. So there's going to be nine terms in total. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. x times uh, positive root 2, that's positive root 2x. And then from here, this would be uh, negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times root 2 is negative 3 root 2, like that. And then you got to take this third term, foil it out with these three. So negative um, root 2 times x is negative root 2x. Negative root 2 times negative 3 is positive 3 root 2. And then negative root 2 times positive root 2, that just gives us negative 2. Right, so we foiled this out and notice how there's nine terms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That makes sense because it's a three by three. And basically, when you write this out, making sure you didn't do any mistakes, so be careful with your algebra, be careful with your positives and negatives. Basically, all of the terms that have roots should cancel out. So we got this positive root two x, negative root two x. We got this negative three root two, positive 3 root 2. So those cancel out. And notice all of the radicals now are gone. So continuing this up here, we would have y equals a. <clears throat> what are we left with in the brackets? So we got x squared. And then uh, we would have this minus 3x minus 3x. Those are like terms. So this would be minus 6x. And then we would have plus 9 minus 2 so that would be positive 7 like that right does that make sense so all of the radicals canceled out and that's always what should happen if you fully foil it again it's just going to take you a little longer because it's a 3 by 3 foiling so you're going to end up with nine terms but from here uh, looks a lot nicer there's no more radicals left so you could just plug in, actually I'm not going to write y, you could just plug in uh, this point here for y and x, solve for a. So y would be negative 5, a would be, or uh, x would be negative 4. So negative 4 squared minus 6 times negative 4 plus 7. So this would be 16 plus 24 plus 7. This is negative 5 negative 5a, 16 plus 24 is 40, plus 7 is 47. So basically, a is negative 5 over 47. And that doesn't uh, simplify any further. And once you have that a value, you plug it in here, right, into the quadratic without the radical. So you wouldn't plug it in here or here because here we still have radicals you plug it into the simplified quadratic without the radicals so your final answer would be y equals negative 5 over 47 and then in brackets x squared minus 6x plus 7. And then some answers will have it in standard form so they might expand it in the bracket but usually this is okay basically your teacher usually is just looking for you to get that correct a value here and making sure that the quadratic inside the bracket doesn't have any radicals. So again, that's one way to do it from this step. Expand everything. All of the radicals should cancel out. If they don't, then you probably did something wrong over here. But if you um, distributed the negative correctly, expanded correctly, watched your positive and negatives, all the radical terms should cancel out and um, and then you end up with a smooth quadratic and then you can just solve for your a value like we did before. Now the second method you could use from this step instead of expanding foiling out everything is you can recognize that at this point this is a difference of squares here because this x minus 3 this x minus 3 are the same and then this minus root 2, positive root 2. So this is like, um, let's say, uh, in general, if you remember, 
a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b, a plus b, right? Difference of squares like that. So this x minus 3 is like the a, and then this root 2 is like the b. This x minus 3 is the a, and then this root 2 is the b. So we've got a minus b times a plus b, like over here. So we know that this has to equal a squared minus b squared. So what you can do <clears throat> is you could just multiply the n terms, right? That's what we're doing. So a times a is a squared. Negative b times b is negative b squared. So you could take x minus 3 and multiply it by x minus 3. So continuing this up here, let's actually erase this we'd have y equals a, and then in brackets, x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is x minus 3 squared. And then root 2 times root 2 is just 2. And then this negative positive make a negative here. So root 2 times root 2 is 2, so we just put a 2 here, like that. Right? So again, x minus 3 minus root 2, x minus 3 plus root 2. So x minus 3 is like the a value, not this a value here. Don't get confused with this and this. I should have maybe used a different uh, variable here. But anyway, this a, this a, they're different. This is just to show you the general format for a difference of squares. So we got a minus b, a plus b. And the way we get a squared minus b squared is we're just taking the first terms, multiplying them by each other, taking the last terms, multiplying them by each other. Because if you FOIL out the middle terms, they will cancel out, right, in a difference of squares. So x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x minus 3 squared. Negative root 2 times positive root 2 is just negative 2. And then from here, notice that if we take x minus 3 squared, expand it out, x minus 3 times x minus 3, if you FOIL that out, you would end up with x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 2. And then the 9 minus 2, that simplifies to x squared minus 6x plus 7. And notice that this is the same quadratic that we had in method 1, right? Remember when we foiled everything out and we had all these radical terms here? The radicals canceled out. Up here, we ended up with that same quadratic. Right? But notice in this case, we didn't have to FOIL it out. We didn't have to have those nine terms. Right? We can just simply take the first terms, multiply them by each other, take the last terms, multiply them by each other. Right? So it's less steps, but it's a little tougher to see. So I'm not sure which method you like better. The other method is a little longer, but I feel like it's easier to see. Right? You just FOIL everything out. You just got to really be careful with your algebra, with your positives and negatives. My suggestion with these types of questions is to maybe do both methods uh, each time and then just see which one you're comfortable with. Um, you could even do both methods on a test if you have time to check your answer as well. That's another good way to go about it if you have the time, of course. So, <clears throat> and then from here, it's the same thing as before. So we're plugging in negative 5 for y. We're plugging in negative 4 for x. And uh, when we isolate for that a like we did before, we end up with uh, negative 5 over 47. And uh, this negative, this uh, a value, we would plug in here into the simplified quadratic that has no radical terms. So negative 5 over 47 would go here. So that's the exact same answer that we got when we did it with method one. Right? So when you get uh, these kinds of x-intercepts, the process is a little bit more complex, but if you follow these exact steps, you should get the correct answer every time.